Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a newish tent for me. I got it around six months ago when I did the East Highland Way. It's the one behind me, I pitched it. It's the Big Agnes HVUL1, Ultralight One I think that stands for. And a little bit of a comparison with the MSR Hubber NX1, which I've owned in the past and I used to do a, a multi-distance multi -distance hike as well, the, the coast to coast. So, Let's jump into it. All right, shout out to my dad for lending me his garden on this one. Oh, the professionalism, just the pole. Pack size, fairly long, longer than I thought it would be. You could fit it in the bag nicely, you could strap it on the outside as I did on the East Highland Way. Nice little loop at the end. You can pick it up by the loop. It's got a draw string on the end and it just feels light. You know it's a, it's a three season tent. You know it's gonna be sort of for those multi-day hikes because it is lightweight and that's why I wanted it. It's the one person one, as I've mentioned, I did want the two person. It wasn't available at the time. Slightly glad with hindsight that I didn't take that because it's the heavier of the two, obviously. As mentioned, just weighs over one kilogram. So on the trip, it was, at, it was perfect. It rained quite a lot, kept me completely dry, even though on the second night, I didn't stake it down properly. And yeah, I can't speak highly enough of it. I did want the two person purely because it would just give me more space on that trip and it was only slightly a couple of hundred grams heavier again i'll put the weights down uh, below as well um, so i may i may get rid of this for the two person in the long term just because that's the tent i really wanted long term in terms of like a lightweight three season multi-day sort of hiking tent or i may keep this one for those those multi-day hikes if i don't have depending on how many i, I plan to plan to do. I did have the Hubber NX, the one person tent as well. Now you don't see many big Agnes's in the UK because of, they're predominantly they're not made here to be honest. I, I believe they're made in the US. Um, don't quote me on that, do look, do look up that yourself. And because of that there are taxes for ordering these kind of things so you do pay a little bit more. But for me this is the one I wanted because I had the Hubber NX, as I mentioned, the one person tent, and you see a lot of those MSR tents in the, in the UK. They're easier to get hold of and they're cheaper as well, generally speaking. And that's what I used on my coast to coast walk that I did a few years ago, but it wasn't quite long enough. So that's why I wanted this. I was happy to pay a little bit more. This was long enough. Um, I'm a tall guy, six foot five nearly. So this suited that down to the ground. The walls are nice and steep and I'll show you those in a minute. So that's the other reason. Um, and as I mentioned, the taxes are a little bit more for getting these kind of these kind of things available in the UK. Big Agnes has got an amazing reputation in the US. So I knew it was good quality. DAC green feather light poles. So you know it's all good quality, lightweight tent. Enough waffling from me. I'm gonna have my brew. It's early morning here, but I'm gonna get this out and I'll talk through a bit more of the details. So this is everything you get with it. You get the, the sack, as I've mentioned, the DAC Featherlight Poles, green, although they're not actually green, that's just the name of them. You get the little sack for the, the, the pen, tent pegs, kind of fairly standard. You get seven of these pegs. They're quite piddly, but, stop that blowing away. Um, they did the job, they work really well. And I'll show you what it all looks like when it's guyed out the poles bag as well, and obviously, as well as the tent itself. And then just a couple of guidelines. You can see I've not had to use those yet. Actually, there's a third one here as well attached to the tent, and I think there's another one. But let me just start putting her up. So it's all just one piece. 
and obviously the the head end has much longer kind of poles Obviously this is a lightweight tent, so it's going to be thin, so it does feel very thin, but having said that, the quality feels really good. You can tell this is a, more of a top end kind of tent, just by the, the little features, for example, the clips, when you clip the outer tent onto the kind of the main section, so you pitch the inner first, as you, as you will have seen, and then the outer, and that just clips in at the main points. There aren't enough tent pegs, unfortunately. There are seven, as I've mentioned, and there are multiple sort of guy lines and stuff, which gives me, I mean, it allows them to quote a lower kind of packed weight, I guess, just over a kilo as I've mentioned. So you'll need to take some more if you want to take this out in any kind of decent weather. And I took the MSR out in weather and these tents do hold. You think they're lightweight three season, they're not going to, but I took one out in a storm and I'll post a link up to a video for that if anyone's interested. And they do work really well. So I'd love to test this one out in those kind of conditions, albeit take a few more tent pegs. It's got some nice sort of features on for the, in terms of the ventilation. And it just feels good quality. It's a very good looking tent. Um, particularly the outer when you put it up and you can move the outer around and position it around. It's super lightweight and I, I really, really like that. Loads of little toggles as well. And there's one really cool feature, which I'll show you in a second. It's also got some good color coding. So the gray ends of the outer match the gray ends of the inner. So you know which way round the fly goes. I think that's really useful. And similarly, the poles are grey, so you know that they, which side of the inner they attach to. Now that's important because, as you'll see in a moment on the inside, one side is a lot wider than the other one. That is one of the main functions of the tent, guys. You have like a little roof section. If you put your pole, walking poles in either side, that will stay up and just gives you a little bit more space inside. You can see just how much vestibule space you have in there. It's pretty huge. And with that flap out, it's also big. Let's have a look inside. Just some nice nice toggles here holding this back. And there are toggles everywhere. Um, obviously, there's a lot of mesh on the inner. And although this feels quite thin, it does feel good quality. But the mesh obviously keeps the weight down, right? And then here's the inside. So tapered larger sort of head end there and a bit longer at the back oh it's massive absolutely massive if you look down there like my feet aren't touching at all it's quite wide as well again i'll put the dimensions and everything down if you look at this got a decent bit of space there so my feet aren't touching that end there's about that much space. It just feels wider as well um, than the MSR. So definitely a lot longer, definitely steeper walls. Some of a Scotland forest left in here. <laughs> the thing I really like about this is all of the, these pockets as well. It's a subtle feature, but it's so, so helpful. If you've got wet gear, like I did on the coast to coast, that, I mean, that's a huge pocket. Just chucked a load of clothes in there. You've got some loops up here for lights, or if you want to string a line so you can Hang some of your wet clothing. More pockets here, pockets, pockets. Another pocket here at the head end. But the thing is, guys, the, the steepness of the walls is intense. And that is what is really appealing about this, is that if your head's down here, you're not gonna be have your face in, in a tent, which a lot, of, a lot of tents have. Headspace is huge, I mean, I've got a good sort of half a foot at least above, above me. I can sit up in it. I did a camp last week in the, in the Fuel Raven, a Bisco one, um, and you just can't sit up in it. It's, it's, um, I'm considering the next sort of four season, well, I know which four season 10 I want, but that one, there's just there's no comparison. So this feels like plenty of room. And again, that's why I wanted the two person for the, the trip that I did the East Island way, because the, the space inside, but absolutely brilliant. Future here, guys, which I've, Kind of been searching for as I look to kind of pin the sort of inner door back really. It's doorkeeper, nice bright red label. 
you know, it tells you there it's the doorkeeper. So that's, I mean, that's again, a nice touch. Guys, that is it. It's the MSR Harbour. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, I've had a couple of beers last night, let's be honest. I do love MSR tents just because of the quality and it got me through a storm that night, you know, and uh, some sort of nostalgia around the coast to coast and it, and it kept me for nine nights. Um, and this one, when I slept in the Bothy in Scotland, for the East Highland Way, I just used the inner. So that was really versatile as well, but it wasn't long enough. So that, that's kind of why I went for this one in the end and just liked, the, liked all the features. I like the roof section, I think that's cool. And you can just tell they've been making tents for a very long time because they've, over time, they know what campers want and they've made loads of features around it. But anyway, I'm gonna stop waffling. That is this week's video. If you did like it, do hit a like. It really helps with the kind of YouTube algorithm and put a comment below. I'd love to see your thoughts on this tent, if you've used one or what kind of sort of ultralight backpacking tent that you're using. And subscribe if you're new. Anyway, take care guys. Have a good one and peace out. Love ya.